again, happy St. Patrick's Day. Today is going to be talk. We're going to be talking about a couple of different things, but uh, disrupting the pattern. We're going to continue that kind of theme, but we're going to be talking about who's in the green, because I was just working on some of the GSA market cap materials that we supply for them, and um, and I realized that that there, it's a great day to talk about who's in the green. We'll talk about a little bit how what that means. I'm Dave Lowe. I'm the CEO of ISI Federal, and together with me today, I have Jamie Zell. He's the director of GSA Solutions and also on our sales side. Say hello, Jamie. Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great day as we're coming right into spring, and uh, I've got some great things coming up on today's broadcast, and you're going to – some really good stuff coming your way. Good deal. And uh, I appreciate you, Jamie, for filling in for me last month while I was in Italy, of all places, with my daughter getting engaged to uh, – to um, one of the airborne infantry men. So, I, you know, that's that was a crazy thing, but I, I appreciate that. So the numbers that matter most, 197, 586 or is the other one, and 951. If you're not familiar with those numbers, we'll help get you familiar with those in a little bit. A little bit about what we do here. Uh, we're going to talk about the sponsors a little bit, review last month's programs, talk about some of the patterns that are happening here. Uh, disrupting the pattern is really the key that I've been I've been driven by lately, uh, and getting your company injected into that pattern. So we'll be talking about that as well as, as some of the GSA changes and giving you access to some of the resources that work. A little bit about us: we do business development in the federal space, and that starts with getting smart about the marketplace with some intelligence. We'll be directing some specific things through our intelligence project today, and just a little. Uh, Little bump for us for from one of our clients, Inc. 500. They're a 70 million dollar company now, and we find things that they simply can't find on our own. You can check out Link Services. They uh, they provide cell phone management services of all things. We also provide marketing services, and we'll talk a little bit about getting in front of these people and making a difference uh, when you're in front of these people. Some of the things that you need to do in order to do that. We also, as mentioned earlier, we do vehicle development and management, where, which Jamie does. Talk a little bit about um, the vehicle development and management if they're interested in getting a GSA schedule. Most of the folks here are already GSA schedule holders, so that's, that's one thing. But as far as maintaining those schedules, tell us a little bit about what's necessary to do that. Sure. As an existing schedule holder and you're going through its initial five-year life cycle or maybe you're in cycle two, uh, maximum time on a schedule is 20 years, but it's important to keep your schedule current. A lot of people forget about that and things get dated. Uh, old, new products come in that are not on your schedule that should be. Old products go away. Pricing gets out of date and you're also eligible for economic price adjustments. So as, so as your margins may uh, shrink slightly as some of your own cost factors change, you're able to do economic price adjustments. So it's really important to keep your schedule current, and that's one of the services that we do in the way of GSA schedule revisions. And then we also do schedule maintenance to help take some of the workload off of your desk to be able to do uh, quarterly reporting, uh, mass mods, other things to your schedules to keep things current. If you have questions about that or needing to make changes to your schedule, there's my information right on screen. Certainly feel free to pick up the phone and give me a ring after today's webinar and we'd be happy to address whatever needs you have. Uh, there's also some things coming up later in the show about uh, migration in the way of professional service schedules. We'll talk about that a little later, but uh, yeah, good, uh, it's great. important to keep your schedule current and that's, uh, it, it's, uh, we, we can certainly help you with that task. Yeah, and we'll talk about that too. That's a that's a headache in the making, and as we speak. So I appreciate that, Jamie, very much. Uh, we also provide dedicated representation in in and around the D.C. area. Um, we also travel all over the place now, so it's dedicated representation where you need us. And the fact of the matter is, people buy from people they like. Our job is to help you find out who they are and get them to like you. It's just that simple. We do that with events where we're we're out there waving the flag for you. Uh, more importantly, though, we want to get you in a place of being an expert in your field and having your federal buyers and federal program people see you as experts in your field. And we do that as well. We stalk decision makers, making sure that uh, we're, we're getting the SES folks all the way up through the administrators if we need to and down all the way through the uh, through the program folks. We provide feet on the street for folks uh, who don't have it here in the D.C. area, and that encompasses 
where where most of the federal business is happening. So we're here to help you where you need us the most. If you're not local to DC, you know the importance of being in DC and having a face here. Uh, we have tens of millions of dollars in direct and indirect federal sales that's, that, that we have um, historically. So we know what we're doing here in the space and that's why we're here to help you get there. Um, some of the folks that we do business with and we have relationships with right now, there's orders coming in from every one of these agencies and a bunch more, but these are some of the agencies that we actually work with on a regular basis. Another thing I'd like to point you to about a sponsor is if you're doing merchant card services and we, we're not getting a bump from this, we just love them because they no, understand the government and they do level three compliance. They have the ability to drive some of those some some of those fees down and you know that those fees are bottom line dollars if you're giving away uh, two and a half three percent of everything that you do to your credit card company that is impacting your margin significantly and we want to make sure you know that you have resources for that to so reach out to revolution payment system so why are we here today uh, what I'd like to do is if you open that panel on the right hand side you can tell me why you're here today uh, but we have a few people that that said it, uh, that gave us this information beforehand. But if you open that panel, you can let us know with a question or, or, or chat. So let me know about that. Uh, Alexandra, spatial integration systems is about regulations on marketing and logo and reaching out to the federal clients alongside tools for gathering prospects. Wow. There's a lot of stuff there, Alexandra. So if, if you can kind of drill me down in, into a couple things, we are going to be talking about marketing. I'm not sure about the logo piece, but uh, as far as the, the tools for gathering prospects, we'll certainly get there. April, I learned who to connect with within the VA and active duty. Love it. Jan, how to win some contracts. Isn't that the truth? That's why we're here. Uh, Jacqueline, gain insight on how to get in on some to see program staff, right? There's two different sides. Jacqueline, there's, there's the procurement side and there's the program side. So that's good stuff. Uh, finding winnable opportunities for Cheryl. Absolutely. Um, that, that key word, winnable, I love because there's a lot of stuff that's not winnable. And we'll talk about how, find, how to find some of those. Help get GSA completed. There you go. Jamie Kelly needs some help with GSA. Lori, find some of those agencies that no one markets to. Woo, yeah, I love that. Uh, Karen, interested in as much information as possible prior to in initiating the first proposal. Perfect. Because you don't want to do all the work if you don't know the information that's necessary that resonates with your with the folks on the other side. Barath, I will get a strategy of how small companies should target the opportunities without agency past performance. Another big thing, catch 22, right? Barath, you have you, you need to have past performance in order to win a contract, but you can't win a contract because you don't have past performance. So, so there you go. So uh, get the doors open, Kurt, love it. Renee, develop other contract vehicles. Great, because it's not just about GSA, right? It's about ID, IQs, GWACs, BPAs, and whatever that's out there. Love it, Renee. Identify a federal buyer and the chance to bid, right? That's what we really want, Sonny, is to be able to get in front of folks that are federal buyers. Laurel, identify opportunities within our space and learn more about what they're looking for in proposals, right? Good, to know what they want to see from you in a proposal. Love it. So why are you here today? If you haven't, let me know. Open that right-hand panel. And by the way, make sure you are putting in your, your pin so that we can talk. Uh, let's see. Um, the rule, so, so Alexander, rules and regulations on marketing GSA and the whatnots. Okay, very good. Well, I think we'll get into some of that for you, Alexander, and we'll do that. So anybody else that has anything that they want to say, open that panel on the right-hand side and type in a question and make sure you put in your number, this, this pin. Don't put in 13 because that's an old one, but uh, this, this will give you an idea. Most folks that are here need help with business development, and that's just great because that's what we help people do. So we can do that. We, you go do free stuff. We have a free ebook that's available on isifederal.com. There's a bunch of free stuff there. So go there and check it out, and you can download that as well. A lot of what we're doing in review is actually re re uh, related to the things that I wrote about in, um, in Going for Gold. And if you take a look at the things that we're going to be concentrating on first, got to get smart about the marketplace. If you don't know what your market looks like, if you don't know where the money is, if you can't follow the money, you're going to be missing it out, missing out on that. Ultimately, we need to build relationships with all the people that are responsible for the types of purchases that they do that relate to you. And we want to make sure 
that that you understand building the relationships so that you can get ahead of those RFPs ultimately to improve your your positioning and win. And that's that's what we're all here for, right? So 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 feel free to go download Going for Gold and, and take a look at that. We've been talking about disrupting the current pattern. So before we get into the, the message for today. I'm going to do a little couple little recaps. First of all, we know what the GS the, the SBA pattern is, right? Get a GSA schedule. A lot of money goes to GSA. And make sure you watch FBO, monitor eBuy, meet with the Ozda Booze, the Office of Small Disadvantaged Business Utilization. Go to these events where you get we do speed dating and get get matched up with somebody. And by all means, register for the prime vendor databases and the the capability statement repository we want to make sure that we get your capability statement let me tell you something the capability statement repository is the trash if you don't have a relationship so what we're gonna we're gonna bypass a lot of these things and and i love i love working with the small business folks if I, they can help me half of the small business folks don't have any juice they can't get in meetings with anybody so we need to have people that can actually get meetings with us, for us. If they can't, you, you need to know within a very short period of time so you can dismiss those folks. We're not going to be talking about the SBA pattern. This is a pattern for failure. If you follow this pattern, you will be spinning your wheels and you will lose your schedule. It's just that simple. Most of them, uh, let me say it, 90% will lose their schedule if you find it. So the fact of the matter is if people buy from people they like, we talked about this before, your job, get out there, find them, and get them to like you. Now, we're going to talk about some of the specifics of how you can do that as well. So let me ask you this. Since people are buying from people they like, if it's not you, then who is it? Who are they buying from right now? And the fact of the matter is they already have resources that they're buying from. They're already satisfied with the resources that they have. The contract vehicles that they're using are already existing and in place. They don't have to worry about creating another BPA because they already have one. Federal buyers, they don't like change either. They don't want to be, they don't want to change. So if they already have these relationships, now this is where we start to get into the, nu the nuts and bolts of it to say, hey, this is the current pattern. If this is the pattern that they're already buying from people they like and people they know and they have relationships with, then you've got to get in there and disrupt the pattern. And so what does this look like? Who are they buying from specifically for you? We're going to dive into a couple pieces here. We just we're, we're just did an intelligence project um, for we're, we're in the process of it for for someone that does work in um in facilities this is actually older data but we we're doing work that affect that's affected by facilities so here's some facilities vendors so if you're if you're in facilities if you have an O3 fac this is this is where you live right mcor huge in the federal government obviously so these are the folks that they're buying from you need to disrupt the pattern of them buying from these people and to redirect it to you that's what they're, you're asking them to do with people that they already know and trust, right? So we're working to disrupt that. So who's in the green? Who are the people that are actually winning? Who are the folks that are doing what's necessary to actually get into this marketplace? So we're going to be getting into that in a minute. So in the disrupting the current pattern, we're going to talk about how to, last, last month we, we talked about staying relevant. And we're going to rewind through that. The key decision people, these are the people that you're selling to, the people that are buying what you sell. They have different roles, different needs, and different buying motives, and they're either on the program side with the program manager and the technical representative, usually on the program side, and then you have the contracting officer, Don, who's actually facilitating that contract purpose uh, pro uh, and proposal. Um, you want to look professional in front of folks? We talked about capability statement, what this looks like. And remember, the multiple decision makers, they have different buying motives, right? Every one of those people have a different reason for making the decisions and including you in the pool. Make sure you're pitching the right motives. And sure, people don't hire from a resume. They don't and they, they're not going to hire you from just your capabilities. But if you're not in front of them the right way, you're going to miss out because they'll throw you out of the pool. So first impressions do count. 
uh, recapping, staying relevant, the persistence, the regular touches, the calls, the phone, the emails, the, uh, the, the regular flow of information so that you're in front of these people regularly. You can't just call them up and say, what do you got for me today? And then go away. And then call them in a year and say, what do you got for me today? Remember, I called you a year ago. That doesn't work. Persistence, regular touches. When, when, you're, when you're letting people know about those regular touches, what are you saying to them? You're going to help them, hey, understand, hey, safety in numbers. That's a key decision making, a reason for making decision for these folks. They need to feel safe. And one of the ways they feel safe is if they're if you're winning contracts, whether in their agency or somewhere else in the federal government, let them know. Why? Because it says, hey, these guys are qualified. They're winning. They're growing. We want to be with a winner. Safety in numbers. Safety in the numbers of contracts, other people that are making decisions to hire you. That's the safety in numbers. To be able to minimize the competition, utilizing your certifications, getting those injected into the RFP. You can minimize your competitors. If you have a particular certification, even if it's just a membership of an organization, you can utilize that. You can get to a place where you can utilize that and, and inject that into the RFP. We talked about the expert status earlier, speaking in front of people, getting, in, getting your message out there in education sessions, procurement briefings, whether online or in, or in their office. So we're, we, we do this regularly where we pull in the experts and create you as the expert. That's what you really want to do because if all of a sudden they say, well, if I have a question, why don't we ask Dave or ask James, who is, is with one of our clients. So the things that affect their world is another place. The FAR, the policy contract changes. We're going to talk about a little bit about PSS changes in just a minute. In fact, speaking of that, speaking of change, let's talk about those changes. Jamie, you talked about this last month. Give them a quick recap on the changes that are coming down both on the people that are on professional services contracts, and then we'll talk about what that means to, uh, to the people on the other side of the fence as well. Go ahead. You bet. Um, major changes coming down. There's a, a new policy been brought to into, into the circle from GSA with regards to any of the schedules that provide professional services. That could be engineering, that could be MOBUS, that could be IT services in 70, that could be language translation services. There's a whole host of different schedules that are all about professional services and all professional services are going into a new element called professional service schedules, which is PSS. The good news is it's a single place for processing all professional service schedules, all schedules about that. That helps us overcome a, a hump of the past for more diversified companies that have multiple offerings in professional disciplines. There's now a single place to be able to, to get them uh, awarded without a handoff back and forth between different government agencies within GSA. That's a that's actually great news for schedule holders. Uh, there is the uh, that does call though for a migration of your existing schedules, and that certainly does call for some challenges and migration. Uh, GSA has been kind of sculpturing this and moving forward, and of course they make the rules and they change them on the fly, and and we're we're keeping on top of that with latest updates and whatnot. If you have a professional services schedule and haven't started any migration process, we should probably talk to make sure that you're staying on top of that because uh, as we keep moving forward in a, in a timeline perspective, uh, the, uh, the, the, they're looking for May 1st as to have all schedules in from, for the migration process into PSS. So uh, we can certainly help with the challenges of migration if you're a professional service schedule holder. Um, that's, that's something that uh, you want to be, be certainly stay on top of and again, feel free to give me a call or email me. We can help you in that process. Also, new GSA policy. If you're sitting on a goose egg or you are under the minimum and you're not reaching your minimum sales goals and your contract gets scheduled, or excuse me, canceled, in the past, you just turn right around and create a new one and go back in and restart the whole process again. Now you have to wait a full year to reapply if your schedule gets canceled due to lack of performance, low sales, no sales. So it's really important if you're in this situation to address that and don't let this happen to you because you need to keep your schedule in place as a purchasing vehicle first and foremost directly with GSA and direct GSA purchases but also to use it as a tool in other areas for creating BPAs and also use it as a credential stamp to show that you have good past performance so if you're sitting on low sales no sales we should really talk right away because that's something we want to stay on top of well speaking of that Raj Williams uh, just popped in said the professional services schedule is super 
for a company like mine with multiple skill sets. I'm coming to you guys for help. We welcome you, Raj. And he says, I'm in the no sales category with my company's O3 fact schedule. I need your help. Raj, you are my next favorite person in the world. So uh, stand by. We'll, we'll certainly help you with, with both of those things. So um, it, we'll Raj. dive a little bit into that on how that works. I'm glad that you're here, and I really appreciate you you uh you reaching out like that and i appreciate the softball too because i I definitely love it (laughs) so uh getting to a place where raj is actually in the red so we'll talk about raj in a minute but um who's in the green who are the ones that are actually winning and we we uh we do this for gsa market cap we do just a summary and it's really not all that complicated but i will show you what it looks like if you go to gsamarketcap.us you can see uh hang on a second you will see the ability to be able to download um, some information. And I'm going to take you to GSA Market Cap real quick. There's a Google Zone. Um, so you can go here and you can you can click. It comes from SSQ data. If you want to see the raw data, you just go right here and it goes to, to the SSQ data. What we did is we just simply extracted that information and you can click here and download uh the the final revised information because it came out originally and then they revised it and they haven't updated it yet what i what drives me nuts about this is this information is reported by you as gsa schedule holders and it's you know that you have to report within 30 days right you know that with but within 30 days of the end of the quarter well they're supposed to tell us that On a regular basis, last time this came out was November 17th, 2014. Can you tell me where the fiscal year, first quarter for fiscal year 2015 is? I don't know where it is. GSA doesn't release it. So the the problem with this is it's not completely accurate information, but you can use this to drive down into specific information uh, about your competition. And if we take a look here. And we're actually on 03 facts. So, so I actually guessed really well for you, Raj. And that is that you can go into this. And if we go back to the original, I'm going to clear all these filters, right? And you'll see that all of the schedules are here, all your all your schedules. But if we dive down, we take a look here, you, have, you can see who the winners are and that you can sort them however you want. What I wanted to be able to do is say, hey, where are the winners and how do I find out? who I'm really competing against in the space. So if you have, depending on your schedule, just go in here and you can click on this and then you can, if you know anything about Excel and even if you don't, it's pretty simple. Just click on that, that number and let's go down to that 03 fact and we'll take a look at that for you, Raj, and we'll see who the winners are. So once we get there, we can sit and, and they're, they're separated into green, um, yellow and red. The reds, no sales at all. So if we take a look at what we have, and we say we we say here are the winners. We can easily see the O3 fact winners. And we're gonna talk a little bit about MCOR because I looked into that a little bit, so we can take a look at who's who's actually winning. So let's so this is pretty easy, right? You can download this and you can fiddle around with it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But this tells you how many contracts. Take a look at this. 6,300 have no over 6,300 have no sales. Another 2,000 are underperforming because you need $25,000 per year just to keep your schedule. And if anybody's in here just for $25,000, you might as well just pack up and go home because we're not here for this. We're here because, why are we here? We're here because the average performing schedule makes $2.9 million per year. That's why we're here. We're not here for the for the for the $25,000 and just keeping our schedule. We're here to get this. So if we go back into um, uh, with with <laughs> Raj and say, I'm not backing up going anywhere. Awesome. What, what's the name of your company, Raj? We'll take a look at this specifically for you. And we'll, we'll, we'll dive into this. Um, and if you if you if you have the ability to be unmuted, uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But give me give me the name of your company. I, I have it in, in another spreadsheet. Uh, Green sensitive design. Great. So if we want you can do a search for for. Um, for for this, if you, you know you say green, green sensitive, right? We can see where green sensitive design is. And I'm not just blowing you up in the red. There's a whole bunch of other people that are in the red, Raj. You're not the only one. So what we'll do is we're going to talk about this in a little bit. Let's talk, let's copy this GSA schedule, right? And we will need the 
a couple things in the in, in the future. So if we take a look at what's happening in and around the space, I'm going to drive dive into this and I'm going to try this, uh, Chris. This is brand new interface for us. I mean, when I talk about brand new, we've been doing intelligence for a long time, but we've created some some sweeping changes in the way that we're operating uh, to to get better and better and better. So if we go here, I was looking up somebody else's um, before. Let's see, this is. Let me put in this here, and we say boop. We say boop. If we do this by contract and we clear this, right, we can look up, we can search. All right, so here is Raj's information. Here's here's his his Dunn's number and no three fact. Now, Chris, you're going to remind me how to do this. I want to add the sin Addison's. and the contract that, that he operates under. Well, and now I'm going to take, take this out and do um, and then add the Dunn's. Is that right? No, 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 keep the duns blank. Keep the duns blank, and I'm going to do a search. And deselect. Oh, 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 you can do it that way. That's fine. I got it. All right, so here's all the competitors for you, Raj, in O3FAC under your sins. So this is getting specific. Now, in order to really tell what's happening here, and this is where, and this is where we're going to add all the duns numbers, right? Yes. And then we're going to clear these right is that right yes now we're going to do a search now of all the companies that have gsa schedules right of all the companies that that have gsa schedules here they are and this is so you know this is not just their sales under gsa how do you know that because we can see if we just do it at do a total of who the winners are and GSA on GSA market cap alone. And let's just go down and we do a sum, and we see there's 489,000 and change on on all of the GSA schedules in O3 fact. Not bad money, almost a half a billion dollars. Not bad money, but that's not all that's happening here, because look look at this number, 40 billion. Now understand, this is over. This is over a five-year period because we did we did this. Uh, we we put in a five-year period, and they're looking at like a bunch of data, a little bit over five years, as you can see. But the information tails off for the contracts, right? So that is the essential for being able to figure out where the money is, though, is taking a look at the people that are buying within those sins, buying within your sins, and then looking at the companies overall. Why is this important? It's, in, it's important because not all the information, not all the sales are going through GSA, right? We know this is the case. Sometimes they have IDIQs, they have BPAs. Sometimes they're using the GSA schedule numbers and not even running it through GSA. They're just using your numbers, right? So this gives us the ability to take a look at your competition and see where the money is. Now follow this. Once we get to, to where the money is, we can take a look at th this is what our intelligence looks like this we did for a very specific company so the data is real the, the company is fictional but the data is real because we did it for somebody else um, this is specialty hvac if you know anything about hvac units in computer rooms that's what we're talking about so we take a look at your main and we say okay where are the laser focused business where's the laser focused business and we take a look and we say, this $36 million over five years, are you kidding me? It can't all be there. Because why? Because some of those HVAC systems are in data centers. And some of them are bought as HVAC. And some of them are, are just actually built into the facilities, which is where your O3FAC lives. Right, Raj? So your O3FAC is, is facility support. That's what you do. So at the end of the day, we want to know not just where your laser focus is, we want to figure out how they're thinking about you. How are they thinking about you? And what NAICs and PSCs are they getting put out under? Wouldn't this be interesting to find out where HVAC systems are in and who's buying from, from them? So we get back to here and we see the people that are buying, that are selling, right? These are the people that are selling to the government. But what's more important than the people that are selling? What's the most important thing? What's the most important thing about this? The question is, who? Who in the world is spending this money? 
in O3 fact. And here, and these you can't run these numbers because I already I, I, I fudged them up. We got them. We got these people. We know how many. We know that these there, there's somebody out there that is doing this. We this these, these numbers are real. The people are fake. So don't go, go don't go sending emails to to Kerry Roberts because with the Navy because Kerry Roberts doesn't exist in the Navy. But know that there's real people behind this that we do the research for. And what we'll do. Is, is we take a look at this information from multiple standpoints. First, we want to know what's their largest contract. We want to know how many contracts they execute. Can you imagine, can you imagine somebody that's executing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of contracts that for facilities? And they're happening in the Army. They're happening at PBS. No, no surprise here, right? No surprise because there's a lots of facilities in every one of these places. But there's also facilities in National Archives. There's also facilities in Coast Guard. Some of those under the radar places, which CDC. Then we start to get into some of the other smaller pieces, the other smaller pieces of the pie. Very important to know, names, email addresses, phone numbers, so that we can go after them. Make sense? Everybody tracking with me there? So beyond that, as we talked about before, we talked about some of the competitors. So we look down into the competitors and find out how the competitors are operating. What are the NAICS, what are the NAICS that they're falling under, right? What are the PSEs? Why, why do we look at these? Because these, this is how your buyers are thinking. And if we're not thinking like buyers, we're missing them. We gotta think like buyers. We have to think like they do, and we have to help them do their job the way they do their job. And guess what? Here are the buyers for MCOR. Now let me ask you a question, Raj. A couple different things. Do you want to know, Robert? Renee? Darn right you do. You do. If you're doing 03 fact, you better darn sight want to know Rob. Right? And the, you want to know every one of these people. But let me ask you something. If something comes out with Robert Rune's name on it, what are the chances that it's going to go to MCOR? Probably pretty doggone good because he did 461 contracts with MCOR. Right? So the, the, And so this keeps going down. But what about these other folks? Are these other folks deeply in bed with them? Maybe not. Maybe these couple up at the top? Very difficult. But at least you know who you're going to be competing against. So you can either choose to bid or you can choose to no bid quickly. Don't waste your time if you know it's going to go to MCOR, right? So this is kind of the driving mechanism that we do in the intelligence reports that we create for you to be able to say, here's where the market is. Here's how they're thinking about the marketplace and being able to dive into that. So you saw like the front end of this, but really we're looking for the people that are buying from your primary competition and going after and finding those contacts. And that's what we do better than anybody else on the planet. If there's anything we do differently, that's it. I don't care about an opportunity. Listen to me. I don't care about opportunities unless we're there beforehand. If we're not there beforehand, if we don't have some inside information, we're, we're on the outside looking in. Everybody, know, everybody who's been in this business knows it, that that's the case. So go feel free to go to GSA market cap, download that puppy and get there. So what we're going to be talking about is how to get smart about your marketplace. Did I miss anything, Jamie? No, you are right on. All right. So, so part of, part of what we're talking about here is, is the market essentials. This is ISI Federal's market essentials, it's proprietary information is proprietary data that we research for you and do additional research to get you the primary key contacts within the, the federal space. And my, my whole world is once we identify these people, and we talked about these, this, this is the folks that we're talking about. These are the who that matter to you. It's not a Dr. Seuss book, although it could be. I love it. Um, the who that matter to you are the people that are putting out the opportunities. Opportunities come from people. I don't care about an opportunity unless I know these people. Yeah, we can throw stuff up against the wall and we can turn into a bid machine. But what we really want to do is we want to get ourselves ahead of the RFP. And you can't get yourself ahead of the RFP if you're listening to the same five sheets of paper that somebody pulls out at the small business 
liaison and hands you. Check FBO, watch GSA eBuy, go to FedBid, go to um, Fed Connect. all those things. Very important. Very important if you're throwing in bids, right? You got to know about them, but if you're not ahead of them, you're in trouble. And that's the fact of the matter. And what I want to point out is these are the major agencies. And these are the smaller agencies, the ones that you can get your feet wet in. If you are up against somebody like Deloitte or somebody like MCOR or somebody that's big that has connectivity within major or major areas of the government, you cannot compete with them on the tens of millions and $100 million contract. Look at the sizes of these contracts over here, folks. You're not going to be competing for a $20 million contract. You might not even be able to compete for this $918,000, right? But look at look at this one here. 106,000 is the largest. 747 contracts for 5.5 million. Bite size. Love Joanne. Love her. Because that's the kind of stuff we can get in there. Now, more importantly, getting back to the, the to the MCOR piece, is how important are these people to you? The people that are buying from your competition are the primary people, especially the ones that line up with you. If they're small business, if they're 8A and you're 8A. Or if you're service disabled and they're service disabled, these are the ones that you want to be in the mix because you get yourself positioned right and then you're, you get shortlisted. That's the objective. Get yourself short, shortlisted, right? So 461 contracts with what, that one person, email, phone number, critical. If you're going to be proactive about anything, you better be after them and you better know who they are, right? And real quick, this kind of feeds into our our Scottish theme for today, or Irish anyway, where we, William Scotsman, serious company in, in, um, in being able to supply these. They're already successful in their marketplace. They have been there. They 25% of the federal market they own for portable office and storage solutions. 25% of the market. They already have contract vehicles in place. They have $80 million in federal sales alone. And they have dedicated salespeople after the effort. They have access to GovWin. They have access to everything else. This kind of stuff is a game changer for you because it shows you where and prioritizes how you need to go after this marketplace. That's the value of it. So you can check it out. You can go to isifederal.com. You can you, and it just hit that market intelligence and you can see what you get and how it works. It's really simple. And we do this research for you. It is it is a comprehensive, almost ninety, almost a hundred percent of what you need uh, in your um, in your federal strategy. It's almost everything you need for a federal strategy. It can help you get money because you can go to the bank and say, "Hey, look at this federal strategy I got." And we have a GSA schedule, and we have the pieces to go after this, and we have we have the ability to be able to to pursue this. If you know, if you need some additional marketing dollars. We call this step one. Federal the, the, the market essentials is step one. If you don't know who you're after, you can't possibly be proactive about meeting somebody. you got to go find those people. Step one, find the people. And, and we call this market essentials, key contacts who buy your stuff, your competitor's contact. I cannot stress this anymore. If you know who your competitor's contacts are, you can go about going after them. This is where you start to understand the and find the under the radar contracts, because if you're communicating with these people before they hit the street, I'm going to go off. I'm going to go off on a tangent for just a second. I want to go and I want to pop up Fed Biz Ops. That's where everybody's instructed to go. We're going to look up the last 365 days. And we're going to see how many pieces have come out as opportunities, 40, 43,803. You can also look in the archives if you want to, and there's another 22,890. So my point is, of the ar of the things that were archived and the things that were there, we add both of those things together. So let's go to it, 43, 43, let's call it 44, just to be, just to make the math easy, and, and 23, and we come up with what? 67,000 opportunities, lots of opportunities, right? Lots of opportunities. There's 2.7 million contracts written in a given year. Where are they? Where are the rest of them? They're not here. 
they're not going to pop. They're not going to pop here because the relationships are driving it. Most, most of the are of the opportunities are competed between five or less competitors. I'm going to show you. Watch this. This is going to blow your mind. Let's go back here and go to facilities support, which is feeder three. We go to month and year, and eh, that's not what I want. The offer report. Facilities contracts, 80-20 rule. Is it in play here or what? Literally, right on, 80%, five or less competitors. 80% of that. And we'll get to why it, why it matters. And here's, here's where they're happening. We know that D.C., Maryland, and Virginia is happening and when they're happening. Take a look at this real quick. I'm going to get off on two tangents, then I'm going to come back. What is happening here? These are the numbers that matter most that we talked about earlier. There's 198 days left till the end of September. If you're not in front of these people now, you're already behind the curve and you're probably already looking at the next year. But if you take a look at this, and this, this is universal, almost universal anyway, throughout the, the federal space for purchasing. Look at the dollars that are associated in September. The, uh, the the nuts and bolts for step one is that we have a special for thirty nine ninety five. It saves you five hundred five dollars. All the pieces that we've been talking about, the under the radar contracts, agency spending, getting to the primes, knowing who their contacts are, their federal buyer contacts as well. Best way to get in front of of, of a prime to get their attention is to go through who's paying their bills. So in recommended action steps. So again. Some pieces there. The other piece I wanted to do is bring out, after you find who buys your stuff, we can help you go after them. So we have a package that, that's, uh, that's also there. This is steps one and two. So step one, find them. Step two, go after them. And that includes your market essentials package, your capabilities review so that they know it's professional. You know what you're doing. A lot of folks need help with that. We have an email marketing process that gives you an introduction, a first follow-up, and a second follow-up that gets anywhere from 8 to 12% dialogue. So when we do the introduction, 8 to 12% of the people you're going to be talking to are going to be responding. We have a special – I'm not going to re reveal our secret sauce there. Just know that we have the capacity to be able to do that with some of the folks that we know. And if you do this, it's $52.49 to save $1,000 over $1,100. So – those are the pieces that we have there. <clears throat> what we mentioned before, we talked about September. $321 billion is going to be spent in the next 197 days. Going to be spent. Uh, 800, I said 198, didn't I? I was stuck in yesterday. Uh, $821 billion in the next 586 days and $1.3 trillion in the next 951 days. So not only do I want you to think about September, I want you to think about September. September, three Septembers, because if you're developing your your um, your strategy and you're going after these folks, <clears throat> it's going to take you time to get traction in the federal space. But if you do it right, you get to a place. And MCOR is a classic. If you look at their if you look at their model, if you look at how they did, you go back a little bit further. And we did this research a couple years ago. We went back in the history of MCOR and we watched how they kind of fumbled along. But then they broke out. You know when they broke out? They broke out in September. And that's what that and now they hit September pay dirt all the time. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce back to that and I'm gonna say, here's my questions from Raj. Thank you very much, Raj. I'm gonna go to the sample and we're gonna look at MCORs. Just MCOR alone. Let's look at what MCOR did in the month and the year. Let's look at this. Take a look at this. Here you go. Gonna, let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. Through that, throughout this, this term, and this, this also is dealing with some contract data that's, that's out of date. But you're, you have your breakout. Boom. September 1999. Then it kind of fumbled along, and then boom. Then boom, then boom, 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 boom. Now look at what they do in September every year. 
284 contracts, 310 contracts, 275 contracts. This, this continues, this pattern continues. You can see the growth, you can see the regular growth also. This, this average going up, 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 because they, they have a dedicated force and they're, they're, they're a force to be reckoned with. And that's where we wanna get you to, is get you to be a force to be reckoned with. So that's what's happened. In order to do that, if you wanna win business from MCOR, Raj, you in particular, and anybody else, um, and, and I'll get to you, Mike, in just one second, uh, you need to disrupt the pattern. If you disrupt the pattern, you will win. Because guess what? You don't need to be the only winner. When you get into your your in your pocket of people, if you get if you're one of five, you're one of three, you're one of four. I love that. If you're one of forty, I'm not into it. You don't want to get in to be the one of the four one one of forty because that's where you're into that that getting getting there. So pick one of these, get you moving. We'll help you get in front of these folks and get you business in the federal space. So there you go. There you can pick one of those two. There's a St. Patty's Day schedule and uh, uh, special. I'm on schedule world. All right, let's see. Mike says, we have an FSS 75 and 85. Both of these mandatory purchases, Ability One products. Ability One providers are severely limiting our success in the federal marketplace. How can we disrupt this buying pattern so we can consider in the buy, buying decision? Our potential customers like us, they just aren't allowed to purchase from us. Wow. Here's here's where you get into to, to, to some significant situations, right? You have a 70 schedule 75 that's uh office supplies right let me see you mike hang on a second let me see if i can get you unmuted mike are you there uh, yeah I'm here. hey mike what's the name of your company first of all uh, affordable custodial supplies affordable custodial ah so um so you have your schedule 75 and you also have a schedule 85 for the services components is that right correct right well no no they're all supplies they're all supplies. 85, I'm sorry, 85 is, is also supplies. Okay. And and your issue, you have a unique issue because, and this, it's not unique to just you. It has to, it's also FSSI, right? Correct. And FSSI is a butt kicker. Yes. And it's going to put companies out of business. It, it, it did it with office supplies and put tens of thousands of companies out of business. FSSI did. Um, <laughs> And they, they, they touted it as a success, and I'm like, that's not a success. That is absolutely brutal. Um, so what we need to do is, is you're right. They're, they're, some of your supplies are also Ability One, right? Correct. You have Ability One supplies. Yes, we're authorized. Right, you're authorized in Ability One. So if you're going after these folks, you need to get to them, first of all. And, and they can buy from you. They absolutely can buy from you. They may cho they may have mandates from internally within their organization that say that they can't, but that can be fought too. Because you're an ability one authorized ability one provider. You you have you are authorized to be able to sell ability one. I know about this a little bit because we do it with with uh, one of our clients for office. You absolutely can sell, and there are people that will continue to buy. You just got to reach those folks. You got to get out in front of them, get get in front of the, the right people. That's that's the only answer you got, because they're okay. the ones that say no, and they say if they believe that they can't buy from you, they're they're gonna not buy from you. But it but our job, your job, everybody's job is to make sure that they know they can. Is the GSA schedule a valid contracting vehicle? Well, yes, it is. Yeah, they gave it to you for God's sakes, right? Yes. So it is valid. Your schedule schedule 75 is going to go away someday. We know this is going to be true. But but your schedule 75 and your schedule 85 are both valid contracting vehicles that are absolutely you can you can do sales through positively. So the biggest thing is to be sometimes sometimes you can't fight city hall, but sometimes you got to go up and say, "Hey, do me a favor." And sometimes you meet with the folks in, at the administrative level sometimes say, "Hey, do me a favor and don't preclude me from this because I we're we're competitive. We're competitive in what we do. You can you can exclude everybody you want, but don't exclude me because I'm authorized and I have the ability to do it. And you keep going after those folks and and don't get combative about it. That's no. that's not a good thing, right? But no, you no, can. It, the, the biggest thing is educating people that it is 
you you have a valid contract. They'll they'll tell you things like I'm 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 not I'm required by law to not buy from you, right? Have you heard that? Um, no, they're mostly telling us that they're mandated by their commands yeah. or by higher ups. Yep, they're mandated by their commands or higher ups. So so part of that has to be getting getting to getting to the folks. Um, and some people know that they that they can still do it. They may get smacked down every once in a while, um, and that's where your your risk is, right? Your, their their risk yeah. is, you know, you have to give them political cover. If you give them political Absolutely. cover, you'll be able to do it. That'll give them political cover. Good stuff, Mike. I appreciate that. Any other questions? I'm I'm gonna mute you again, Mike. Um, any other questions before we we pop out? Uh, the next webinar. April 21st, 2014, you can pop in your questions or, you know, raise your hand, whatever you want to do. Uh, next webinar, April 21st, we're going to be talking about the problem with FBO. We kind of touched on it here, right? We kind of touched on the problem with FBO is that stuff's not really there. And then it's not really winnable, right? So 2014, oh, jeez. Thanks, Alexander. Appreciate that. 2014, I have no idea, man. I'm still stuck in last year, obviously. So it is April 21st, 2015. Thank you. <laughs> um, while you're while we're we're uh, doing that, I can guarantee you that you can get the, the, the free ebook from here, whether it's 2014 or 2015. Um, so feel free to, to reach out and go grab that. Any additional questions, you can let us know. Reach out to Revolution if you're doing credit cards that can save you money. And other than that, happy St. Patty's Day. And uh, we, we appreciate you guys being here and and bug. Golly, I did it, and I, I did it less than an hour, and I we, I think we went through a whole bunch of stuff. So, hey, we also got Rob Wongard here, I see, or somebody that's posing as him. Let me see. He's, he doesn't even have a phone phone number popped in, but I happen to know that guy just a little bit. But uh, thanks for joining us. We appreciate you guys uh, being here, and if you need to reach out to us, great, and, and uh, we'll definitely reach out to you folks uh, to get your insight on what we can do better, different, to help you. Um, in, in marketing to the federal government. Mike, great talk with you, Raj. We'll be in touch and um, we'll make sure we do that. Um, let's see, GSA folks in Kansas are super great. That's what Raj said, that's awesome. So any other questions right. or suggestions you have for us, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next month. <laughs>